who yearn for a world at peace. I am thinking of you and your family every moment and look forward to rescheduling our meeting at your earliest convenience. Nothing is more important to me. With profound sorrow, Leo Szilard. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin from CBS World News. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. To Eisenhower and all of the Allied victors, to VE Day! To VE Day! For over oh, for a decade I've worried that the Nazis could not be defeated. You know, up until that little man stripped me of my post, I never taught myself as a Jew. But in 33, I was one of the first out the university door. Then hundreds of businesses followed, wandering with me in exile. Many landed here. The Nazis handed us a moral purpose. Now we need a new one. We still have to finish the job, Hans. We have, Arpi. Western civilization is preserved. The enemy has been vanquished. One enemy. The enemy. The Japanese have more tenacity. And fight to the last breath. <coughs> they can't stay stubborn forever. Baton. Iwo Jima. Okinawa. Kamikaze. Enrico, what do you think we should tell the children when this is over? I don't know what to think. Obi, do you think we go the same as before? First we test the gadget, then I we... I don't think now is the time to discuss the future. I go. Alamogordo will only be an experiment, Hans. It's the largest ever. And likely to prove unsuccessful if problems keep outpacing solutions. And if it succeeds, report up the proper channels through the chain of command. We're counting on your calculations, Hans. All of us. The test date's already been set. How soon? Eight weeks. And counting. July. Yes. General Groves is targeted the 4th of July. The nation celebrates birthday of Dick Feynman. Happy 27, coach. I hope you enjoyed my latest mail order extravagance. Come soon to celebrate our anniversary. Two and counting. How about Donald for a boy and Matilda for a girl? Leo, I do appreciate your concern about policy after the war. We shouldn't conduct so much as a test explosion until that is settled. What's wrong with the test to see if the gadget works? And if it does, where will that lead? We were motivated because we feared the Germans. It's not clear now why we're working. President Truman will decide, Leo. He can't understand what we do. That's why a scientific panel will hear your concerns. Who's on it? Lawrence, Fermi, Oppenheimer, and me. We're willing to consider if the war can end with a test demonstration instead of using the gadget against a live target. You know what I think. Yes, but Los Alamos may not. Nobody could think straight in a place like that. I'll go down and tell them myself. The Groves <coughs> won't let you set foot in the state of New Mexico. When the scientific panel meets June 16, I'll take the recommendations of you and your Met Lab colleagues with me. You have 10 days. Jim Frank will help. The other boys are confused about what a moral issue is. My wife, I am too slow. I, I understand at last how sick you are. I wish to comfort you as you want to be comforted, not as I, sh I think you should wish to be comforted. This time will pass. You will get better. I don't believe it, but I do. I adore a strong and beautiful woman. Give me of my slowness to understand. I am your husband. I 
love you. The panel should pay special attention to the sections I marked. These considerations make an unannounced attack against Japan inadvisable. If the United States were the first to release this destruction upon mankind, she would sacrifice public support throughout the world, precipitate the race for armaments, and prejudice the possibility of reaching an international agreement on the future control of such weapons. More favorable conditions could be created if nuclear weapons were first revealed to the world by a demonstration before representatives of the United Nations. We urge that use of nuclear bombs be considered a problem of long-range national policy rather than military expediency, and that this policy be directed to international control of the means of nuclear warfare. Leo, I promised the advisory panel would consider your report, and we will. We're sending a copy to Secretary of War Stimson, too. Deke, you need a vacation. I'm fine, Hans, really. Go back to Far Rockaway. I'll get to touch when we need you. Hans, humans figure out how to live despite knowing death is going to come. We joke, we love, we laugh. But the only difference for Arlene and I was quantitative. Five years instead of 50. We had a hell of a good time together. I must have done something to myself psychologically because I didn't cry until about a month later. I was walking past the department store and I saw a pretty dress in the window. I thought, Aline would like that. Then it hit me. Physics has never been Leo's life. He's as passionate about politics as science. Maybe more so. What if he and Jim Franco are right? A demonstration on an uninhabited island might save lives. And if it fizzled? Even if it did, we'd lose the advantage of surprise. When will Oak Ridge have enough magnesium for a gadget? Next month. Waste it all on an experiment? Makes zero sense. Leo's no team player. He thinks he's Cassandra. He's wasting time thinking about the future. Wasting? Chicago boys finished their assignments months ago. They don't live in the present anymore. And here. Complete immersion in immediate tasks. There is no time. Think. The gadget will save lives. You sure? Wasted hours means wasted lives. How much worse could it be than firebombing of Tokyo? 86,000 killed, and Premier Suzuki <coughs> says his people will never surrender unconditionally. An invasion would cost tens of thousands of American lives, hundreds of thousands of Japanese. Don't we have a responsibility to prevent that? Leo thinks we're responsible for opening the door to an era of destruction. Some of us feel responsible for opening the doors of science. No one stops its progress. If there is fault to find it lies with those who want war, not to those who want knowledge. And that's my frank opinion. Here's my recommendation. No technical demonstration is likely to bring an end to the war. We see no alternative to direct military use. Arthur, if the test next month fails, this report is meaningless anyway. The test date's already been set. And if it succeeds, <coughs> report up the proper channels through the chain of command. President Truman has a big decision to make. Do you think there's any stopping the momentum of two billion dollars? Name the test shot Trinity of it. A holy experiment that reveals a mystery? Death followed by a resurrection? Something like that? Should a chaplain attend? 
fellas, relax. Teller says the chance of igniting the atmosphere is one in three million. Advert's calculations always puts me at such ease. What's this place called? <coughs> McDonald's. Farm? Ranch. How far from Los Alamos? 200 miles due south. And what's that area over there? Jornada del Muerto. Meaning? Journey of the dead. Jornada del Muerto, indeed. This wind could lift the debris and shower the entire region with radioactive dust. Maybe we should postpone. The weather's got to change. <laughs> Gadget fails to fire. Bainbridge climbs the tower to check it himself. Another PhD serving science. Let's guess the size of the explosion. We'll have a betting pool. I have a simple little test in mind. Everyone choose a number from 100 to 20,000 in equivalent tons of TNT. Gentlemen, place your bets. 8,000. 1,400. 300. 45,000. It's only supposed to yield 20,000. I'm an optimist. Oh. I'm not. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Such confidence. 200. Where's the deal? Far Rockaway. Still recovering from our lean. Deep depressed is just a little more cheerful than other people are exuberant. You think he'll make it back in time? I sent a telegram. The baby is expected any day. Hans, what's that going to make him think? Get his bet when he arrives. I say 10,000. I'll announce the winner afterwards. I hope you can. Hans? A side bet on whether or not we incinerate New Mexico? Tchaikovsky? Nutcracker? Must be radio interference. Governor Dempsey? General Groves here. But sorry to wake you in the middle of the night. Monday, 16 July, 1945. Here, Teller says it will protect against sunburn. In the middle of the night? No, I can't tell you where I am. I listen very closely to me now. You may have to declare martial law later on today. No, I can't tell you what time. I just want to let you know just in case. That's right. Martial law. Go back to bed now. <laughs> At a long siren, two minutes to zero. All personnel whose duties do not require otherwise will lie prone. Heads away from ground zero. Do not, repeat, do not face ground zero. Base and eyes are to be directed toward the ground. Be on the left, the snakes. At zero, do not watch the flash directly. Turn over after it has occurred and watch the cloud. Stay on the ground until the blast wave is passed. At two short whistles, indicating that passing a hazard from light and blast, all personnel will prepare to leave. Assuming the chain reaction stops. Remember, injury by ultraviolet light is best avoided by wearing long trousers and shirts with long sleeves. <laughs>